parte tre. We'll learn to speak um, Portuguese. So, Cheers is a romantic comedy that ends with the idea that if you love your job and your friends and you work with your friends, that's enough happiness and fulfillment and it's as much as we can necessarily expect from life. Friends would be is a romantic comedy as a TV show. Um, it I'm just just also. falls apart at the end because by the end, who cares if Ross and Rachel get together? I mean, do you care anymore? It's the only reason the show was on. Yeah, but they they <laughs> shot past the mark somehow um, with yeah, that. Yeah, they didn't they and, didn't do that. That right, but, outfit, that last but. episode, not good. Um, uh, if you notice, uh, Joey's touching Phoebe's hair when they're all saying goodbye to Monica's apartment. That's nice. But How I Met Your Mother, which is my favorite sitcom, is a romantic comedy about letting go of the girl you're obsessed with, letting her marry your best friend, meeting the mother of your children and your wife-to-be at the wedding, just when you thought you had to run away because you couldn't bear to see the girl of your dreams with another man. And then losing her to fate, and six years later, getting permission to love again, and going back and loving that person who became like your best friend. And people get very upset about it, and I saw it in syndication, so I can't share in their shock, because I saw the finale and then the pilot episode back-to-back -back early in my experience of watching the show. Mm -hmm. um, but. It's, I don't think it's any accident that Tracy McConnell, who's kind of the Phoebe of the show, but a lot more grounded and realistic, um, but similar concerned with the downtrodden and similarly wistful and whimsical and painfully good-hearted and idealistic and wise and insightful, um, she was engaged early in her 20s before she met Ted. Did you know that Tracy McConnell was engaged? Have I said it endlessly? I probably have endlessly made that point. So Tracy was engaged. So she has two great loves and two soulmates, and so does Ted. And that's okay. But you're my soulmate, dearest. I am a great love, huh? You're my great love. And I feel bad about that, but I feel happy about it, too. Well, I feel happy about it. Thank you, baby. Um, Some Like It Hot is a great romantic comedy, even though I don't know if Sugar should trust Tony Curtis's character. I love it mm. that she falls in love with him. I love when he acts like Cary Grant, who was one of your role models. And The Philadelphia Story is a great romantic comedy. I, Claude didn't agree, but I think that the um, intimate communication that Katherine Hepburn's character, Tracy Lord's, and um, Jimmy Stewart's character, his name is very memorable. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Don't remember. It's a liter. It's a name that's a literary reference, but I don't know the reference. Henry Blake. No. That was math, right? Yes. When they spend the night together all night, and they talk deeply throughout the night, and they're drunk, and they talk, and play and have an adventure together. That's real intimate communication and I think it's great. Even though they don't end up together, their their night together is a mechanism for her to find her way back to the man she divorced because in the world of the movies she was too judgmental. Um, that was apparently the way the studios were sort of like punishing Katherine Hepburn because the audiences were mad at her for being too independent and unconventional, which is unfortunate. So at least they, and we still do that. There's still examples, whether you believe it or not, in popular. Mm -hmm. um, I just watched a very good video by The Take, who do who have excellent videos and everything from the most seemingly lighthearted or girly, effeminate, to really hardcore and heavy, like um, Breaking Bad or Dexter or, or Kylo Ren or what have you. Um, Anyway, The Take did a whole video on Walter White's wife, Skylar, and how first we blame her for inhibiting Walter's descent into criminality, um, empowering himself through being a criminal, and then we blame her for cooperating. And she's really like an utterly emotionally battered, you know, 
uh, woman imprisoned in this horrible marriage to this increasingly evil Who crime, crime boss. Oh, people just hated her, apparently. I, I didn't watch the show. Song, I think. Yeah, that's true. And, um, yeah, it seems like... Um, oh, this is a nice romance, just from what little I know they, of it. They didn't hate her for... Not only people hate her character for just, you know, being that voice of reason and, and decency, but they hated the actress. There were, like, death threats against the actress. For a lot of Maybe not reason. seem as... I mean, they didn't hate her for a lot of reason. No, it's just sexism. It's just misogyny. And they kind of corrected it with Better Call Saul by making the blonde, um, you know, um, a similar role, but with nuance and sympathetic. Because I think they saw... Harder. Yeah, and she's hotter. That's true. And she's not a mom. And, um, yeah, but, you know, there is... I, and and I think it would be good, you know, it... Well, that movie that I'm not so fond of, um, uh, American Beauty, explores this, you know, the dark side of conventional masculinity and the dark side of conventional femininity, um, which isn't very feminine in a way when, you know, cause the, the woman becomes a wife and mother and then she's sort of not feminine anymore. But the problem with that movie is that we see Kevin Spacey's character emancipating himself and his wife just seems to be digging herself deeper into it. The only thing she does that's not that is that um, affair with oh, um, Peter Gallagher. Super sexy. Um, uh, Roger Ebert made the point that Peter Gallagher was almost too handsome to have had a great career because you know, there aren't that many, um, it's, it's, you know, in an era when, um, more character actor kind of men like Dustin Hoffman were getting great roles, um, that perfectly gorgeous man doesn't, doesn't get the really soulful roles anymore, doesn't get to play complex characters. He ends up playing somewhat evil guys like just the philandering brother and, um, sex lies and videotape. Anyway, so she has that affair in the motel with Peter Gallagher, and it's hot and it's passionate, but it seems totally soulless. Whereas, even though Spacey's got this like pedophile infatuation with a teenage girl, it's somehow soulful, and he, and he comes to realize that it's completely misguided, and yeah, and he actually has a soulful connection where he realizes that he's not can't be messing with her, and she's just trying to establish her identity by flirting with him. Well, Matt Bennett's character was so awesome. Well, you saw that. I, I mean, I think that's because you're not watching as a defensive female viewer, so you're not... Say that again. I think that's because you weren't watching as a defensive female viewer. You weren't, like, looking I at... I agree. Them. Good. On that note, do you want to say goodbye to the <clears> peoples? Tell <throat> <laughs> me having a good time here. You look like an elf. Okay, well then you hold the thing for a while. Oh, okay. Because I'm tired. I just well, flew in from Chicago. If I hold the thing, I'm going to look at my face. Yeah, that's true. You can hold it up to me. And I can sit across from it. I go, hi. Hi, everybody. Should I put on my ring? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's tough because, you know, you grow up, you're supposed to run a household. Even if you have a job, you're supposed to be a mom, and then you can't be a feminine princess anymore, and then people hate you for that. Except people like you who like MILFs, because you're weird. Divine decadence, dark. Le cabaret, cabaret. Bienvenue. Here we are again. And here's my ring. Okay, if we continue, if we continue, you must <laughs> hold the camera. <laughs> when Christopher, the cabaret came from a collection of short stories by Christopher Isherwood, which was called I Am a Camera. He is credited with taking Flaubert's hyper-realistic writing style to the next level. And writing stories about Paris and Berlin. Well, I'm a koala. You're a koala? Are you a koala man? Uh -huh. Everybody, i will put a link down below to the koala man video. There's my koala thirst tweet, koala man thirst tweet. And it's his koala man performance, the greatest performance of the 21st century. I am not kidding.
Bye, everybody.